Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. Merry Christmas, everybody. We have an encouraging word today, and I hope it lifts your spirits. We're reading from Luke chapter 2, starting from verse 1 through verse 18. And it came to pass in those days that there, were, uh, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. Pat's two cents on that one. Can you imagine? They didn't have taxi cabs. They didn't have buses, trains. They didn't have Uber. These folks had to ride on the back of a camel or a donkey. Basically, Joseph probably did all the walking while Mary wobbled up on top, full-term pregnancy, uncomfortable for miles and miles and miles, and who knows how many days the trip took. Can you imagine her going through that, being ready to give birth at any given moment? The discomfort. She was probably having uh, slight labor pains as she was approaching the city of Bethlehem. Then they found there was no room for them in the inn. So they couldn't find a hotel room. There was nowhere for them to sleep. Now think about it. Think of the of the the tension in Joseph trying to find a place for his wife to give birth trying to find a place for them to lay down for the night. Imagine what Mary was going through. And this is the crazy part. They were on assignment, y'all. Mary was about to give birth to the Savior of the world, the divine Son of God, God incarnate, Jesus Christ. Yet, they had all this crap to have to deal with at the same time. Mm. The thought of how life can pounce all on top of you and it's one challenge and one crisis after the other. And the crazy part is they were, they were on the scene because they were to give birth to a miracle. The savior of all mankind and there was no place for them to sleep except for a barn where there were sheep and oxen and all kind of, of, of cattle. <laughs> Can you imagine the stench, the discomfort? No mattress now. No nice warm blankets. No nice fire built to keep you warm. They're cold. They're uncomfortable. They're tired. Imagine that. And hear Mary in pain and labor. And they're bringing, they're birthing in the Messiah. And all this crap, all these inconveniences, no room, no space. They can't rent a hotel room. He can't put his wife in a bed. Wow. Probably no hospital around. How crazy. All right, let me continue to read. I'm painting the scenario so you can picture what a horrible situation they were in while they were being used divinely by God to usher in the Messiah of the world. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 6, and so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. 
And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now you got a bunch of men working the midnight shift. Mm -hmm. They're at the same level of, of, of garbage collectors or, or maintenance workers. These aren't people of renown. These aren't high level politicians. These aren't people of royalty. These are ordinary Joes just trying to make a living, earning their keep out there in the middle of the night, watching over their sheep. Wow, nothing glorious about who they are or what they're doing. Mm, mm, mm. Verse nine, <clears throat> excuse me. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, not unto the king, not unto the president, not unto the, the heads of state. The Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. I mean, I'm not the Lord, but the angel was speaking to them. Sorry about that. All right. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Doesn't that sound poetic? Wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Listen, that baby was laying in a, they had to make his bed in a feeding trough. A big old compartment that animals feed out of. Couldn't have been the nicest smelling compartment for a baby to sleep in. But that's all that was there, y'all. For the Messiah. Wow. Hmm. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace. Goodwill toward men. God means good towards you, y'all. God is on your side. He is for you, not against you. Mm, mm, mm. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, a feeding trough. Mm. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now listen, it was a very inglorious night. Now, it was miraculous that there was a star in the sky that led the three kings to the manger. But all that led up to the birth of Jesus was totally inglorious. And see, a lot of times we have to remember, if God did not bring his own son into royalty, if God did not bring his own son with splendor and pomp and circumstance and ceremonial glory, and they had to go through all the inconveniences of there not being room for Jesus anywhere. We have to remember that when we go through, just because it's inconvenient, just because it hurts, 
just because there are delays, just because there are denials in your life, does not mean God is beating down on you. It could be that God is birthing through you, through your hardship, through your circumstance, the miraculous blessings that God had already had in store, that God already had in his plan for you. Imagine God loving you that much, but it doesn't feel like his love when you have to lay your baby in a feeding trough. It doesn't feel like God's love when you have to sleep in a barn, on the floor of a barn. No bed, no blankets, no fireplace, no surround sound music, no Uber, no taxi service, no train for transportation. Hmm. Sometimes when we're roughing it through life, that is the very passage. Listen, listen. That is the very passageway that God brings his miracle through. Sometimes God has got your blessings set up. Everything is in plan. Your promotion is coming. Your blessing is coming. Favor, abundant favor, miraculous blessings. But it seems like some have to go through the dirt. Some have to go through trials. Some have to go through the valley. Some have to go and be taxed. And it's a taxing situation. It's a tiring situation. It's a, it's a frustrating scenario that our blessing has to come through. Just like the miraculous birth of any child, pain comes before the game, does it not? So know that no matter what life is bringing your way, God's blessing is on the other side of it. One way or another, God has blessings on the other side of the pain. God has blessings on the other side of the hardship. God has blessings on the other side of your labor. Oh, of all the frustrations, of all the inconveniences, of the cost, of the unexpected mishaps, God has blessings waiting for you, even on the other side of a death of a loved one. Remember that. We always know during the Christmas holidays, it's a season of death. For some reason, a lot of people seem to pass during that season. So while you're going through the morning, while you're going through the frustration, while you're going through the fears, the anxieties, the turmoils, the upheavals, remember God is totally in control. And remember that word, goodwill toward men that the angel said, God only wants goodwill towards his people. Know that God is on your side. Know that God is for you. No matter what life brings, no matter what happens to your family member, no matter what happens on the road, no matter what is going on in the government, no matter what's happening in your household, God is on your side. God loves you. You hear me? Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. When you think of how the most beautiful miracles are birthed in the middle of the night, the night season is the part of life we don't like. We don't like going through darkness. We don't like going through uncertainties. Ch the chapters in our life that bring question marks, the chapters in our life that makes us wonder, does God love me at all? Does God hear when I call? There's a song that says, like peering through a window blurred with rain, emotions run together in a flood of doubt and pain. 
We've prayed as best we can. Now we must leave it in his hand. Yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even if it seems impossible to me, he is able. And if he chooses not to move in the way we prayed he would, I'm confident he's working all together for my good. <laughs> and I'll stand behind his word, for he is able. You hear me, y'all? Be encouraged. Let this Christmas season remind you of how much God has in store for you. Look at all that mankind got blessed by, by the birth, the coming of Jesus Christ, the advent of Jesus. He is here with us, God with us, Emmanuel. Oh, he is the most high. Let me read Isaiah, because I like calling the names that Isaiah calls him. Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, for unto us, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and we praise and we glorify his holy name. We bless you, Lord, for all that came with you, for freedom, for deliverance, for salvation, for redemption. We praise you, Lord, for your favor. We praise you, Father, for being our Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Father for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for our savior. Thank you for our deliverer. Thank you for our counselor. We bless and praise you, Father. We celebrate you with all of our heart. And we know, Lord, that with all that Joseph and Mary had to go through to bring this about, you have blessed so many lives, so many of our lives because of what they went through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless and praise your holy name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay, you guys, I got a little carried away, but bless him when you think about all the, the blessings and the miracles that God can bring out of darkness. No matter what happens, the people may dwell in darkness but God shall bring light into our darkness at every turn. Lean on him. Call on his name. Oh, mm. bless him and praise him while you're going through. And watch him work his miracles out of your darkness. In the name of Jesus, be encouraged here. God bless you. Amen.